Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how Toolpath works and the workflow that we use to accurately estimate a part based on our shop's tools. So first I'm going to go over to the parts page and I can simply upload a step file via drag and drop or I can even email my step files to Toolpath so they show up here on the parts page. Now let's click this part and we can see on the summary page a machine ability score based on the tool library that we have selected. In this case, we are using the default cut config library that comes with Toolpath. So I'm going to switch it to my Aluminum Brothers Speedio library. Now we can see we get a different machine ability score and Toolpath has highlighted the problem areas that we are going to run into. So I can click on this challenging pocket, which highlights a feature, and Toolpath gives us a suggestion on how to make the pocket machinable. The pocket was designed with a 35 thou radius but the smallest tool we have is an eighth inch end mill. So now we have a conversation between the design engineer and programmer on how to make this pocket machinable. In this case, I'm going to buy a tool with a radius less than 35 thou. Toolpath also highlighted a challenging T-slot that we can click on, and if I turn on show machinable surfaces, that T-slot can be seen much better. The last thing to note in the summary tab is the modified feature section. If I click this open pocket number seven, we can see that this pocket is going to be machined with our smallest tool, a 16th inch end mill. A fillet was missed during the design of the part, leaving a sharp corner. Toolpath calculates the deviation amount of 2.6 thou, and we can also toggle on and off to show the tool where the deviation occurs. We can set up our min and max deviation values based on the tolerance of the part machined in our preferences. Let's jump over to the Tools tab where we can see 16 tools are being used out of our 534 that we have in our library. I can click this Tool 1 Rougher, click Setup, and now see exactly where that tool is being used in Setup 1. Speaking of setups, if we jump over to the Setup tab, Toolpath is intelligently analyzing this part to determine the most efficient way to machine that part in the fewest amount of setups. I'm going to toggle on Show Machining Directions, and on the right side, we see the associated features. This part looks like a three setup part, but Toolpath shows us that there are actually four. So if we click on the fourth setup, we can see there is one through hole. Let's click on that hole. It highlights the hole, and now it shows me exactly what tool is required for that hole. In this case, a 1.15 millimeter drill. Next, let's jump over to the Strategy tab. We believe that it's important that Toolpath shows its homework and what the machining strategy will look like before it gets imported into CAM. I can highlight each operation and it will show me what features are being machined in that operation. I can also drop down and see all the parameters associated with that operation. So here we have our speeds, our feeds, width of cut, depth of cut, material removal rate, and cycle time. The last tab is where the estimate is built. So here we have a nice breakdown of our setup one, the associated features in each setup, the machining time for each of those features, and the total cost based on each feature. That total cost is defined by your shop rates. So we can click on this pencil icon and build an estimate preset that is based on your shop rates. Cost per machining minute, cost per setup, and even accounts for the tool change time of your machine. Let's click out of that, and at the bottom right corner of our screen, we can see a breakdown estimate for this part and the total costs associated with it. As I change the quantity, we can see that the pie chart is affected along with our material machining costs while the setup remains the same. I hope this helps you better understand how Toolpath works and that you're better equipped at estimating parts in your own shop. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updates as we define AI for CNC together.